Hi, all. Today I want to explain um, something I've had a lot of questions about, and that's identifying the A in innovation. So let me start from the beginning. In the beginning, we start with the conversation of the STEM to STEAM. Uh, STEM is a national discussion where, and it's been going on for at least 10, 15 years now, where politicians and academics and people who think the big thoughts are saying, hey, we're falling behind in the world and we're no longer the, the dominant leaders in the science, technology, engineering, and math. As a matter of fact, you might see that movement as far as getting women, girls, interested in the sciences because there's a disproportionate number of men to women. So we are constantly thinking like, how can we make that gap smaller and, and uh, equalize that uh, learning curve? So uh, so the, the discussion that we're interested in, because this is an art appreciation class, is the STEM to STEAM discussion. And that came pretty quickly after the STEM conversation on the science, technology, engineering, math, and promoting that to students so that we can get back in the world as far as leaders and um, thinkers is, in this area. But then the artists and the designers and the creative people said, hey, how about the arts? You can't kick out the arts. And by the way, this is not a new discussion at all. Um, We've been fighting for the reason for the humanities from day one. And the problem is that the STEM disciplines are very solid. They're very structured. You can see what to do, how to do it, and what the results are going to be. The humanities, on the other hand, are about thinking, contemplation. So, for instance, I am a doctor of philosophy. So, I'm a doctor of thinking. Well, how do I justify that? How do you see that? Uh, where uh, MD is a doctor of medicine. And you're like, oh yeah, you make people better and you study the body and you do that kind of stuff. So we constantly are having the discussion of what is the point and what's the value of the humanities. And in this case, we go to why put arts back in the, the STEM disciplines. And I think the discussion goes down to what is the A we're talking about? And by the way, let me just uh, show you what I'm talking about. So, STEM is science, technology, engineering, math. And we're talking about the discussion of STEAM, where they add the A and saying, hey, you need to bring in the humanities, you need to bring in the A, the arts. I think where this dis and and I like teaching this in the art appreciation class because I have all different disciplines in this class. It's a required course, and you're like, why do I have to take this? I don't care. I'm not an artist. I don't draw. Sure, I have pictures on my wall, but why do I care? And that's what we're talking about. Why, as an engineer, a scientist, a mathematician, a nurse, why do you need the arts? What does it provide to you? What value does it bring to you? And that's what this class is about. So let me start with defining what the A is. So in in any discipline, there's a there's innovation. As a matter of fact, I have the list of innovation analysis, and is what I tried to do is get as many disciplines as I could, and have you consider like where did the A come into play? And the A is that creative moment. So for instance, when you innovate or create anything new. First, you have to see it. You have to see what the issue is. You have to see what the need is. You have to see what the problem is that you want to solve. Engineers are engineers because they solve problems. They solve big problems. They go in and they figure things out how to make it work, and they create machines and gears and, and wiring and whatever it takes, infrastructures, they, it, these things that they engineer that solve problems. <clears throat> Scientists think bigger. What, how can I, I have a hypothesis of what can happen if this happened or why this is happening in the world? And then they go and they have to test it to find out to get the answer and the solution. And from that, we get information and knowledge. Mathematicians every day create formulas to try to solve issues, to uh, explain processes. And so there's in, in every discipline, entrepreneurs, they have to think of new products so that they can make money and become rich. Uh, Doctors, 
they have issues that come to them and they have to be creative and imagine like what's going on and how do I resolve this issue before it's even written in the journal. So in every discipline, there is a moment of innovation. And is what the A is, is this creative moment of figuring out the solution and how to apply it. So you first, in any innovation, any discipline, first you have to see what the issue is, what the problem is. You have to imagine what the solution is or how to address it. And you figure out a way to apply it. And in the innovation analysis I give you, it's always the solution. What would, in, that in that discipline, what was the solution? What was created? What, was the, what does it look like from the solution? So for instance, um, one of the, the things I put in there was uh, retail. So I put Walmart and Home Depot. And I'm not even talking about retail generally. I'm talking about those two specific uh, retail centers. And they changed the way that we shop, the way that we live, the way we purchase things. They changed the whole dynamic. And, and so what I want you to do is look at what did they do? So for instance, Walmart did a couple things. They said, we want to get the cheapest price on products. Now, they didn't want the cheapest price at quality, although a lot of their stuff is quality, but their goal was to get the cheapest price to you, the consumer, because they felt like there was a niche where they didn't really care about quality. They just wanted to get a certain product, like a pair of tennis shoes. They didn't need the top of the line. These weren't marathon runners. These weren't trainers, professional athletes. These are people that walk around every day and just need something on their feet and maybe that it looks good and that it won't wear out in three months. And so they went and found all these products that they get for the cheapest. Now, another thing they had to do in with this is distribution. How can you serve a large number of people? Because when you get the lowest price, you have a lot of people and you're going to go through large volumes, large quantities of product. How do you get them to the stores? How do you distribute them? How do you get them out there? And they redefine this. It's just the same way that Amazon is redefining shipping. They're actually competing with Federal Express. Federal Express isn't even going to be doing their shipping anymore because Amazon has taken their place. So Amazon, had they found that they want to get you the product the same day in a lot of cases. Any product you want, same day. How do you do that? So they are working on distribution, shipping, and delivery. Do they partner with other industries like US Mail, UPS, Federal Express, or do they build their own infrastructure and do it themselves? These are the innovations. And this is what I'm talking about as far as it doesn't matter what discipline you're in when you come into this art appreciation and we're in this discussion of what the A is in STEAM. Every discipline requires that creative moment. And this is something that artists practice every single day. Imagine an artist standing in front of a, a blank canvas and they have a paintbrush in their hand. And between the idea that's in their head, the paintbrush in their hand and this blank canvas, right here, when that paintbrush touches the canvas, that's the creative moment. That's the spark. How do they do it? How are they making this idea here appear here? So for the scientists, how do they come up? They come up with a hypothesis. They have to imagine a hypothesis to a solution that they, to an issue that they've seen, a problem that they've seen. And then they have to figure out how to apply it. The one that just in the past couple of years that is amazing to me is that um, Einstein talked about black holes and how they act and react and interact with the world around them, the universe around them. And so there was a theory of that what would happen when black holes collide. Great. There it is. You saw an issue. You figure out a solve it. Maybe you've done the mathematical equations on it. You imagine like, okay, this is what happens. Now, how do we test that? How do we see that? That's the innovation for the science and that the physicists to figure out how can I test that? And a couple of years ago, they actually did. They measured when two black holes collided and they actually have the recording of that moment. That's, that's where the A is. 
Um, another one that uh, is that I use a lot is the Segway. Uh, a creation by Dean Kamen, an engineer to his core. This guy, as far as design, he's whole all engineer. But he created this product called the Segway, and he created it thinking it was going to change the world. Now there's a whole thesis on what happened with that and, and why you maybe have never heard of the Segway before, but the technology that he created is ubiquitous at this point. Look at any kind of the little boards, hoverboards, it's that technology. The robots that are going around on their own, it's that technology. But what Dean Kamen imagined, his problem that he saw, and this is an engineer, so in the engineering world, is like, how can I create a mobile device that helps people get around, but one, it doesn't negatively impact the environment, Two, it takes up a zero footprint, so it's exactly the same size as a human. And it also encourages a style of living that right now, say I'm in Richardson, Texas, we don't live this way. We get in our car, we wanna to go to the grocery store, we wanna go get something to eat, we wanna to go to school, our jobs, we gotta get in our car. You can't walk there. But as the planet becomes smaller, and there's more people, we're gonna live closer and closer together, but we're still gonna to need to get places. So what's faster than walking, a little slower than a bike, much slower than a car, but has no exhaust, you can be around everyone without getting into their space, it's rechargeable, so it's battery operated. And this, so Cayman, literally with the Segway, imagined that he would change cities. As cities closed down and, and wouldn't let cars come in and they got closer and closer together, people are still going to need to get around. And so they could get on their Segway and and go there, drive there. So when you talk about what is the innovation for the Segway, it's literally a, a system. He imagined changing the entire way that we live. So it's more than just a product. It literally is an entire system. Now, some people put experience. Yes, it's an experience. It's really cool to ride on your hoverboard or the Segway. But the bigger picture is that it's a system. Just like the retail centers, it's, it's not a product. It's actually changing the way we shop. That we can go to one store and find everything. Home Depot, imagine that people had these needs of these products, I mean, sorry, of these projects that they're doing. And, and, and instead of paying someone else, we're starting to do it ourselves. Now, that's the do it yourself, which actually we've kind of moved back away from that. It seems like we're kind of coming back to have someone help us do it. And there's a acronym for that as well um, but the the gentleman that started Home Depot he saw this need that people have these projects that they're doing they want to do more and more and they want to get products lumber nails screws at wholesale prices why do you have to get a contract to do it? why can't I get it myself and so Home Depot took us a, a, a way of seeing the world a, a culture of how we're starting to see the world and how we're starting to interact with it and supplied us, gave us the supplies to make that happen. And that's what Home Depot did. So once again, it's it's about a process. It's not just the products, it's just not the actual store you're walking in. It's how they affected the way we shop, the way we look at things, how we could help ourselves live the lives that we want to live. So what your goal is to look at each of these products and imagine that innovation moment and describe it to me. Describe what it is that the visionary, the innovator had to see, the creator, the artist had to see and imagine and then what the outcome was in that spot in between the A, what that was. How did uh, Einstein prove E equals MC squared. Here's the brilliance. Yeah, he has it. The, the two black holes colliding is one of the proven, is Einstein being proven almost 100 years later. So sometimes it's not proven. But what did Dean Kamen have to uh, do to create the vision of creating a new world which he imagined would be the segue 
What did he have to invent? What did he have to imagine? What did he have to create to make that happen? That's the innovation. That's the A. And once again, a lot of times we keep it as arts because uh, artists do this every day. They create every day. They're in that moment. Every day that they create something, they are in that A moment. But it's easy to discount that because you're saying, well, that's the artist. So what I would propose instead of STEAM, S-T-E-A-M, Let's make this I for innovation. Now it applies to everyone. S T E I M. STEM to STEAM. We're talking about innovation. And it's not discounted because that's what artists do, it's what everyone does. So that's what you do with these innovation analysis. And the only thing else I'll say is I have a requirement that you post at least 150 words with any any time you answer a question. This is an arbitrary number. I use it because over the years I found that this number, if the students use that number as their guide, then they're gonna give a more thoughtful, reflective, intelligent, researched response. As opposed to, yes, I agree, or yeah, it, it worked that way, or some three word answer. Because one of the things about this art appreciation class, one of the things about humanities, one of the things about arts, is it's about thinking and reflecting and communicating and articulating and describing the thoughts and ideas that you have based on what you're looking at and what you're, what you're thinking about. And I will tell you this, and it, it cracks me up because my wife is in the sciences. And the work she does for her classes outside of classes, just on her own, the research that's necessary is insane. So sometimes you have to look it up. Tell me about the innovator. Tell me why he would come to that conclusion, how he came to that conclusion, who he is, who she is, a little bit about them. Give me 150 words. How does this product, this experience, this service impact society? Give me some thoughts on it. Give me 150 words. This isn't ridiculous. It's not asking a lot. It's just asking you to think and consider and show me. And, and I say this all the time. If you can give an intelligent, thoughtful, researched, uh, well-reasoned response in less than 150 words, you get the credit. You get the points. But if it's not well-reasoned, and you're just filling the space. Make sure it's 150 words because you won't get the credit. So that's the innovation analysis. That's the A we're looking for. And that's the idea around STEM to STEAM. I'll see you guys next time.